Good morning, everyone. If you do not know me, I'm Jenny White. I am the LIC student here at Messiah with Trinity Lutheran Seminary in Columbus. And we are so excited to have you here with us this morning, worshiping with us. Um, really, the only announcement we have this morning is if you have prayer requests, please submit them in the comments so we may pray for those when the time comes. Yes, and I think that's it. So please join us with Tyler in singing this song. Why you never chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quites. All they never get it right But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. Well, Moses had stage fright, and David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen, and you changed the world. Well, the moral of the story is everybody's got a purse. So when I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood-bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood-bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join us in this next song. short in times like these when this world drives you to your knees you think you're never gonna get back to the you that 
said used to be. Tell your heart to beat again. Close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into the light of grace. Yesterday is a closing door. You don't live there anymore. So say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. Let that word wash over you. It's all right now. Love's healing hands are pulled you through. So get back up, take step one. Leave the darkness, feel the sun. Cause your story's far from over and your journey's just begun. Tell your heart to beat again. Close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into the light of grace. Yesterday is a closing door, and you don't live there anymore. So say goodbye to where you've been, and tell your heart to beat again. Let every heart break, and every scar be a picture that reminds you who has carried you this far cause love seems farther than you ever could in this moment heaven's working everything out for your good Tell your heart to beat again. Close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into the light of grace. Yesterday is a closing door and you don't live there anymore. So say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. To beat again, beat again. Oh, so tell your heart to beat again. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your goodness may be known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now please listen to this reading from Isaiah by Lindora. Say hi. Hi. Ziki, today I am going to test your memory to see how well you remember things, okay? Okay. So I'm going to show you something and you're going to look at it and then I'm going to hide it from you and you're going to tell me everything you remember about it, okay? Okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah. Is your memory good? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'm just going to give you two seconds to look at it. Ready? One, two. Okay, now, what did I put in front of you, Zeke? Um, it was a bear. It was a bear. What color was it? Brown. What kind of clothes did it have on it? It had a tie. It had a tie? Mm -hmm. What is this bear's name? Mm -hmm. What does the bear do? Um, I don't know. Okay, so you know a lot about the bear because you saw him, huh? But you don't know a lot about the bear because you haven't really met him or talked to him much, huh? Mm -mm. All right. Well, there's the bear. You did really good. There's the tie. And it's brown, just like you said. Okay, you ready for the second one? Yep. Okay, two seconds is all you get. Mm 
Okay? Ready? One, two. Who, what was that? It was a puppy. It was a puppy. What was the puppy's name? Chase. Oh, the puppy's name is Chase. What does Chase do? Um, he puts out um, cones. He puts out cones? Yeah. What, is, what does his clothes look like? Blue, uh huh. And, and what color is he? He's um, a thing of this. Oh, so he's brown, just like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. So you know a lot more about this puppy than you did about the bear, huh? Uh huh. His skin is that. Yep, his skin is that. It's brown. And you know why you know more about Chase? Mm -hmm. Because you sleep with Chase, don't you? Yeah. And, and, and you talk to Chase, and you see Chase on TV shows, huh? Yep, on Puppet Show. On the, pup, on the Puppy Show. But you don't, a oh, Paw Patrol, so, but you don't see the teddy bear, do you? No. So you spend a lot more time with Chase, so you get to know Chase better. And so when you just see Chase real briefly, you know exactly who he is. Okay, now look at me. This is who God is. If we only see God just a short amount of time, like just on Sunday mornings, we forget who God is and we don't know God's we don't know God very well. But if we spend every day with God, like God hopes we do, like you do with Chase, then we get to know God as good as we can possibly know God. And that means we can love God even more. Do you love Chase? Huh? I do. I do. That's right, because you spend every day with him. Can we say a prayer? Okay. okay, say after me. God, thank you. God, thank you. For loving me. For loving me. Help me. Help me. Love you. Love you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Messiah. Good morning, Messiah. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 40. 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to nut and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble, to whom then will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? Who brings out the host and numbers them, calling them all by name? Because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. And my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to that. Amen. Let's welcome our gospel. Word of God speak pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be 
still I know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. So as soon as they had left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. And he came, and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up. And then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. And that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And Jesus kill, cured many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak. Because they knew him. And in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and he went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions, they hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. And Jesus answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I might proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. So Jesus went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. So, who do you think God is? Who do you think God is? We've had artists uh, for thousands of years give us all sorts of ideas of the image of God. From Michelangelo's great art uh, at the creation. To uh, cave paintings, uh, catacomb paintings for the earliest church. Where they would hide in these catacombs and, and have church and put it up an image of God in the midst of their worship. And often those images of God uh, look something like the people who drew them, right? So if you're Asian, they might look Asian to us. Or if you're in the Middle Ages, the grandeur ever might be a grandeur of a king that would look foreign to us in the year 2021. Or if you're a black woman, the image of God might look like a black woman. If you have a fear of God, a worry about God, the image of God might be angry. And maybe you have a whimsical thought about God. Imagining God at the birth of creation, creating snakes just because it's fun to do, to roll that clay up. Who do you think God is? Our cousins, our Jewish cousins, they, they don't mess with images of God. That's what the pagans did around them. No, they, they, they use images of nature often to talk about God. Uh, the grandeur of God uh, that could see from the tops of mountains, because God is up there. The beauty of God that we can know in the midst of a sunset power of God that can change landscapes with storms. It, it reminds me of the childhood song that we sing here at Vacation Bible School and Messiah Christian School. My, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. Who do you imagine God is? Sometimes when that image of God is so big, 
so strong and so mighty, we feel really small. Like a grasshopper, the poet in Isaiah said. <laughs> Not a bad animal, kind of intricate, interesting, well put together. But it's tiny, isn't it? Especially compared to us. We could hold a grasshopper in our hand and, and we're tiny compared to God. And the other thing about grasshoppers is that there's a lot of them and they swarm. And sometimes in the midst of this world, there can feel like there's a lot of us. And how can this God who's so big and so mighty know who we possibly are? We're just one of millions and billions. This is what the refugees in Babylon, who the poet wrote the song for, were wondering about God. Their circumstances where they had lived in Judah and Jerusalem were fine a generation ago, but now they had spent 70 years or so in slavery in Babylon. The best of them had collaborated and, and were pets of the princes and priests of Babylon. Most of them had a tough existence. And they felt like grasshoppers that had been scattered. And that the God that they had known had forgotten about them. And that maybe it was time to find a new God. A God that would know their name. A God that would remember them. And this is what the poet in Isaiah is speaking to. Have you not heard? Have you not seen? When our world has gone to hell in a handbasket, we need to be reminded of who God is. Of the God that we have met in our sanctuaries, in the midst of worship. Of the God whose stories we've told in the rhythm of the church year. Stories of God creating us out of mud, male and female, putting us into relationship with each other and with God. Stories of God making promises to us. Hanging God's bow in the sky and promising never to destroy creation, no matter how destructive we have become. Promises to Abraham and Sarah to, to make God's people like the stars in the sky. We know a God who saves, who parts waters so that slaves can be set free. We know a God who is awesome and big, but also small and tiny and vulnerable, who comes to us as a baby to save us. We know a God of sacrifice and service in this world, who gave everything so that our memory of God would be strong. So that in those moments of life where we feel like one in billions, <laughs> that we can be reassured that we are a precious lamb for our God. Have you not heard? Have you not seen? When our world has gone to hell in a handbasket, we need to hear and be reminded about God or we will be tempted to follow other gods. Marduk in Babylon isn't floating around much any longer. But there's plenty of other gods for us to follow. When our world is torn apart, we can try to fix it ourselves by, by storing away enough money to solve any problems because money does solve problems as well as create others. And so we get so much money that when we die, someone has to do something with these big barns full of stuff. 
We, we can rely on ourselves, on our knowledge, on our, on our ability to know things and to fix things. And so that science almost becomes like a good luck charm or, 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 or like a remedy to fix everything, keeping us from having to engage in the real problems in the world that we create. We'll let science figure out this global warming thing while we go on with our selfish ways. Or we can decide not to pay any attention at all to our problems. <laughs> Just ignore them. Or cover them up with drugs or alcohol. Or working ourselves too much. Adultery. Or finding other ways to distract us from the real world that we're in. Or we can remember a God. Who we met for many of us when we were children. We can remember the stories that we heard about that God. And we can remember those other times when we were broken. And that God helped us soar. Like an eagle we hear in this Isaiah poem. To be who we intended to be. That's what soaring like an eagle is, right? It's, it's being who God hopes for us to be. Finding that niche and that notch again. When I was reading about this poem... I realized that this image of soaring like an eagle is part of God's hope for all of us. It is not used just in Isaiah, but is used three or four other times in the Old Testament. It, it comes up the same exact image. And in fact, in this Isaiah image, it's used just a little differently in the Hebrew to indicate that the poet is talking possibly about molting. Right? That this, uh, this things that eagles do where, where they lose their feathers and they grow new feathers on top of them. And so the image is one of death and renewal, of, of old things going away and something new coming, coming out. Which makes sense for these refugees, right? Whatever's going to happen to them next, they are not going to go back to Jerusalem like it was. It's a devastated landscape now. Things have changed. Whatever's going to happen next for them in the eyes of God, in the palm of God, in the hope of God, is going to be new and different. It reminds me of this Japanese art that our sister in Christ, Liz Newell, introduced Pastor Liz and I to a few years ago, where she made this pot for us, this candle holder, and then she broke it and put it back together in a way that uh, that shows its scars, but is even more beautiful than it was before. It's something I keep close by. It's a beautiful image of who God is and what God does. Because each and every one of us is going to find a moment in our lives where we're going to have some questions about what now and what next. And what holds, what my future holds. And we need to hear the poet again in those moments. Have you not heard? Have you not seen? To remember the God that we have met. In ways that are remarkable. And fantastic. So that we can begin to hope. As we leave that space. As we fly ourselves. As we find a new direction for our life, even though we might feel lost in this minute. As we rebuild things better than they were before, even in the midst of the damage that's done. As we discover a new way of being in love and loved. That multiplies the abundance of love we've received. And we do all that in the midst of our brothers and sisters in Christ who hold us tight while we're hurting and in pain so that we may lift up and fly like an eagle. Who do you think God is? Have you not seen? Have you not heard? You have met this God in this space. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
This God has claimed you in the waters of baptism. This God has fed you week in and week out at the table of his blessing. You have heard the stories of this God. You have told each other the stories of this God so that you will have a memory in the broken moments of your life. You have sacrificed and served this God, loving all of the creation as our God loves that creation. You have been comforted with the hope of the resurrection by this God. So that even at that very end, you know there's no end. No end in sight for this God. And this God has given you a people, a family to walk this road with. So that on your moments when you feel grounded, those old feathers can shed and new feathers can grow. And you can indeed fly like an eagle. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for love, capture you and famine will bring you no fear under his wings your refuge his faithfulness your shield and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold angels he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways upon their hands they will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and he like the sun and hold you and hold you and hold you in the palm of his hand of his
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please share God's love and God's peace online if you're worshiping live with us this morning. Or share God's peace in your household if you're worshiping later on in the day or tomorrow or in the days ahead. Or even open up the door and shout God's peace to your neighbor. Wouldn't that be a good gift? Uh, as we prepare for this offering... Uh, and a blessing of wine and bread this morning. Uh, we have this offertory that we're gonna that we're gonna give up a, a, a gift that I think Lori Hitzman is sharing this morning. Our, our children's uh, uh, musician here at Messiah. And uh, if you want to share your prayer concerns, we should have announced this earlier, and I apologize. Uh, but but hopefully you people have lifted up your prayer concerns, and Becky will bring those up for the midst of prayer after this offering. If you have an offering to share, a monetary gift, uh, it is uh, welcomed and appreciated. Uh, Becky has given you an opportunity to do that online, I am sure. Uh, or later on, you can find our website. And many of you are sending in those offerings. And if there's any sort of need that our family of God has that's monetary, please let me know. And we'll see what kind of resources we can raise up uh, when we all work together and love each other. Let us have our offering.
swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me. God, we indeed do remember your saving actions for us in history and in our story. We do indeed remember and give thanks this morning that you have come by our side by sending brothers and sisters in Christ and your powerful, mysterious spirit to save us in the midst of our troubles. We do indeed remember, Lord, those moments when we have flown like an eagle and also those moments of despair when we can hardly get off the ground. Lord, I lift up the prayers for all those who are praying with me today, those who feel like they're soaring today and those who feel like they're grounded. May each and every one of them remember you and your love, Lord. That's my prayer. And may this body of Christ and this church encourage all of us wherever we might find ourselves in life today. Lord, I pray for those who are sick or ill in our midst, our family and friends that we're concerned about, Rob and Kim, Meg, Susan, Jennifer, Ralph Portier, Ryan, Sandra, Amanda, Cindy, Jerry, Donna, Ron, Cindy. I pray for Fern Radican and Jerry Turn, Heinz Bartke and Cheryl Hill. I pray for Dan and Bethany McFerrin. I pray for Roseanne and Lisa Ann and Gwendolyn and Nikki. I pray for all those healthcare workers and first responders in the midst of this pandemic, for all those who have lost someone because of this pandemic, for all those whose lives have been changed forever as a result of this pandemic. I pray for children learning from home, for parents doing their best with patience, for teachers learning new ways of doing old things. I pray especially for our students and staff here at Messiah Christian School so that they remain safe. I give time for other names to be lifted up now, silently or aloud. Hear these prayers, Lord. Shelter us under your wings and help us soar again so that we might be the hope that you've had in the moments of baptism when you claimed us. Hear these prayers again, Lord. And feed us this morning with this bread and this wine that we've gathered together. Make it extraordinary as your promises are extraordinary, Lord. As Jesus promised of the night he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of Christ. That Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Hear these prayers, Lord. Meet us in this space feed us at this table. Bless us and bless this bread and wine so we might be your people now and forever. Amen. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home.
wherever you are this morning, join me in this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the stay in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to this table. All are welcome. Amen. So before we scatter, we're going to share this meal in, in a way uh, that's going to have to be different because of this pandemic. So at the table this morning, I blessed this bread and wine, similarly to how we did at Christmas Eve, if you remember it. And so now we're going to distribute it. And we're going to distribute it in a way uh, where we will put it in some bags along with a, a, a cup of ashes for Ash Wednesday. And we will share this bread and wine that we blessed this morning on Wednesday night, February 17th, on Ash Wednesday. And we will make those bags available on Wednesday this week, so a week before Ash Wednesday. We'll make those bags available for pickup. Um, so what I'm asking you to do is share this meal all as one body together, even though we're separated uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we remember that God feeds this body with his very body. Um, so pay attention if you are online this week. Council will meet tomorrow, or Tuesday rather, uh, and they will decide some of the future of, of when we're going to reopen some things here at Messiah. Um, and also, uh, they're going to review our financial position, and, and I will send out a letter immediately after that council meeting through snail mail <laughs> that you'll get in your mail, but also uh, we'll post that letter in these uh, email blasts that we send out a couple times a week. We'll post that letter on Wednesday so you can even have it before. Uh, and that'll give some specific instructions too on how to come and receive this communion in order to share it on February 17th. So, so on Wednesday, uh, these will be available to pick up, but you'll also receive an email uh, giving some other instructions and hopefully a path forward in the months ahead if things go well for us here in America against this pandemic. Um, a lot of things to be hoped for. And, and if you're looking at all that on Wednesday, I hope you come for the Bible study at one o'clock and at, at seven o'clock, we're gonna be talking about Methodists, uh, our good friends uh, that surround us here uh, in central Ohio and here in Reynoldsburg that we've been in ministry with forever uh, since Messiah's been around since the mid fifties. Um, and also uh, come for the meal that, at, at 5, 4.45 to 6.15. This great drive-up meal that we have going on where we're feeding a couple hundred people uh, every week in our neighborhood and many of our members too. It's good. It's good. May God bless this body of Christ. Let's have a blessing before we scatter today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. We end today, it's February, it's Black History Month, and so we, we like uh, to emphasize the, the good gifts that, uh, uh, that some of our African-American brothers and sisters have given us to the hymnody of this church. Past has taught us 
sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our parents sighed. Let we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out of the gloomy past till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. silent tears, thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, thou who hast by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. from the places our God where we met thee lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand may we forever stand true to our God true our native land. Thank you, Tyler. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone.